so there's no way to be sure. But I think my uh, my washing machine might be broken. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons of coming out here and being a tuna pilot. Um, before we get into that, I just want to say that the YouTube channel has been growing exponentially. Same thing with the website. Uh, and that's been absolutely awesome just to watch that growth because the whole kind of point behind me creating this outlet was not only for me to kill some you know downtime on the boat, but also to build the community. So to those of you that have reached out to me and had questions about you know what it's like out here or you know, different questions about where you can go for uh, helicopter or flight training. It's been really cool to talk to you guys, um, and so far, you know, I've had a chance to talk to one gentleman from New Zealand, another one from Nepal, a couple of guys from the States, uh, another guy who just got out here from Spain. So it's been really cool to kind of get some input from these guys, answer their questions, and just help them feel a little bit better. With that in mind, looking at the stats, so last month we had 500 repeat viewers. And it's probably about the same 500 people that are going to the website every month and reading the blog and kind of keeping up with what's going on there. However, I've got something like 4,300, 4,400, somewhere around there in terms of new viewers. These are people that are coming to the YouTube channel, watching the videos, not liking, not subscribing. So with that in mind, I do just want to say, please, if you like these videos, if you enjoy the content, if you feel like it's beneficial for you or someone that you know about, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, kind of help me build the community because all in all, you guys are a part of it too. So that's all I've got to say about that. And then from there, we'll go ahead and jump right into, again, the pros and cons. Uh, I've been out here about six months. So today's January 29th. Uh, the end of this month or February 2nd is going to be basically my six month mark out here. And all in all, I've really enjoyed my time out here. It's been an awesome experience to be able to come out here and just do a really cool type of flying. Um, but like any job, there's going to be days where you wake up and you're not having a good day. You're just not feeling it for whatever reason. You know, you kind of wake up and you walk up to the hella deck with your cup of coffee and you're just not feeling it. You don't want to fly. Some days you wake up and you feel like that. And in the moment you get in the helicopter, you kind of have that moment. You're like, fuck, okay, this is kind of cool. I really enjoy what I'm doing. But it's not always like that. So regardless of you know what kind of job you're doing, how much you're being paid, a lot of the negativity, um, or the positivity for that matter, comes from within. It's all about your attitude, keeping an open mind, and just kind of enjoying the time that you have and where you are. Uh, with that, I will say, in order to come out here, you do make a lot of sacrifices. And a lot of that sacrifice just comes down to time. It's one of those things where being out here for a year Realistically, a year is not a lot of time, but it can feel like a long time. You know, you miss birthdays, you miss weddings, you miss those big family events, and that can make being out here really difficult. You know, today, uh, at least back in the States, is my sister's birthday. She's turning 32 today. Uh, you know, I'd love to be there with her and, and you know, that part of my family. <laughs> and that part of my family. Again, just to be a part of it. And to me, families is super important because I don't have a big family. Oh, God, do uh, Sorry. Uh, you know, I've got my mom and I've got my sister and my brother-in-law and I've got a niece. And that's, that's pretty much it when it comes to family for me. So being present for those important times, it's important to me. Uh, additionally, you know, I miss one of my good friend's weddings already. Uh, I'm going to miss another good friend's wedding. And if I decide to stay longer than my 12 months, which at this point I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about, uh, I'll miss another wedding. So it's three weddings. You know, everybody else is, is going out and getting married and having kids. And I'm out here working on my tan and flying a helicopter. Uh, I'm it. So it can be really hard sometimes just to be so far detached. But on the flip side of that, it's also one of those things where I spent four years living in Utah, and I didn't really have any family in Utah. You know, I had my, my long-term girlfriend at the time. We dated for four years. But every time, you know, I'd go back to Mass to visit friends or family, it seemed like nothing really changed. So just keeping that in mind, you know, in a one-year time period, there's a lot that can change, and sometimes there's not a whole lot that can change. So... Again, depending on, you know, what your situation is, if you decide to come out here, sacrificing the time, you know, away from the real world, as I call it, to be here is a big deal. Um, you know, I would say in a sense, it's, it's almost a blessing that the relationship I was in before I came out here didn't work out, because otherwise I might not have ever ended up out here. 
you know, I might not be having the time that I am and building the experience that I am. But on the flip side of that, you know, if I had stayed with my girlfriend, if I had a family, a fiance, kids, whatever it was, I can't say I would come out here. Um, because again, at least to me, that time that you have with your family is unbelievably important. Um, so I think that highlights some of the negatives a little bit, but on the flip side, there are a number of positives. Most guys come out here for the flight experience, and to be quite frank, the experience you get is good in some ways and bad in others. The good parts are you get to fly a lot. For the most part, a lot of the guys out here, uh, assuming you're not on a Japanese boat, fly seven to 800 hours a year. You know, I've been flying between 60 to 100 hours a month, so I'm making really good progress in terms of building flight hours. And what's great about that is that it's turbine time. You know, this is, this is time that I can apply toward another job. It's unfortunate that in the industry that we work in, it's all kind of determined uh, by insurance rates. You know, no one necessarily cares about your flight time, that's a big part of it, but it's flight time, what kind of flight time, and is that turbine experience? From my perspective, a turbine engine is no more difficult to fly than a, a regular piston engine. It, and especially in the MD500, there's no FADEC, there's no um, digital engine control, everything is controlled by the pilot. The way the engine responds to my throttle inputs is the exact same way a Robinson would respond to my throttle inputs. There's no difference. So, again, it's one of those things where there's a positive, there's a negative. The MD500 is an awesome machine. It's a lot of fun to fly. In some ways, it flies a lot like a uh, Robinson R44. Um, in other ways, it's completely different. You know, The fact that you have a fully articulated rotor system versus the semi-rigid makes this helicopter far more maneuverable, far more responsive, and just far more capable. Uh, and again, it's also got a shit ton more power, and the weight is honestly pretty similar to a 44, that is. But again, in terms of um, the, the pros, the positive aspects of being out here is flight experience is great. You get to exercise a lot of ADM, aeronautical decision making, right? Uh, there's not rules and regulations out here. There's no airspace. There's no one to talk to. Where you go, what altitude you're going at, um, and kind of how you get yourself around weather is completely up to you as the pilot. So it's up to you to kind of impart and apply your own safety management systems as to, you know, when it comes to flying out here. And it's also up to you to use that ADM and say, hey, this is okay for me to fly or it's not. Helicopter pilots, at least back in the States, um, or at least when we're flying over land, tend to get into this thing with weather saying, oh, well, it's not great, but we'll give it a try. It's that idea that, okay, a helicopter can land anywhere. So if I get myself into a sticky situation, not a big deal. We're just going to land somewhere, wait out the weather, whatever the problem is. <clears throat> out here, that's not an option. You've got one landing zone, and that landing zone is your boat. If you're cut off from it, you're burning fuel in a way to try and get back to it. And these helicopters are not equipped for IFR. Hell, they're barely equipped for VFR. So flying into a low visibility situation out here can be extremely dangerous. Uh, additionally, flying on a boat has its own challenges. You know, when you're coming into land and the boat is moving violently, it's pitching up and down, sometimes as much as 20 feet, um, depending on the waves and the wind and, and what the, what's going on there. You don't have any other kind of outside reference. Your only reference is a moving boat. So if depending on what your approach angle is, or even if you're just trying to hold a hover, it's kind of difficult to tell sometimes, okay, is that the boat moving or is that the helicopter moving and how those two are moving in relationship to one another. So in terms of the flight experience you get out here as a pilot, I think it's invaluable. Uh, but again, it's one of those things where I came out here with you know around 600 hours. Uh, depending on how long I stay, I'll probably leave with between, let's say, 1,200 hours up to 2,000 hours, again, depending on, on kind of my longevity out here. In that kind of hour mark, basically, where you're, let's say, somewhere in the 1,000 to 2,000 hour mark, a lot of guys say, oh, well, I've got 1,000 hours, I've seen it all, I've done it all. That's not true. As far as I'm concerned, at 1,000 hours, you're probably the most dangerous you've ever been because you get into that mindset thinking, oh, I know everything or I've done everything. Uh, and it kind of takes one of those moments where you scare the shit out of yourself to say, okay, I still have a lot to learn. And I know as a 1,000 hour pilot or even a 2,000 hour pilot, I still have a lot to learn. Uh, and that's also one of the reasons why I'm really big on kind of being involved in an aviation community because 
A good pilot is one who learns from his own mistakes. A great pilot is one who learns from other people's mistakes. And it's always been my goal to be more than a good pilot, and hopefully somewhere around the realm of a great pilot. Um, and then, aside from that, you know, kind of the flying part put away, it's been really cool to be out here. I've met some awesome people. Uh, I've been able to kind of experience different cultures. The interactions I have on the boat are still hilarious in many, many ways, and I really do enjoy them. And a boat life on its own has its own kind of positives and negatives. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of have to sit down and think to yourself and say, you know, is it worth it for me to come out here? Am I going to be getting the experience that I want? Is it going to apply to my career later on? Um, or is this not relevant? Am I going to come out here, get this turbine time, and it's, it's not going to apply to what I want it to? So everyone has to kind of make their own decision on that level. If you're coming out here for a financial aspect, I would say don't. I mean, realistically, the money out here, it's, it's not great. If you consider the amount of time you spend out here in terms of, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, you're really not making that much money. Um, you know, with that kind of in the back of your mind, obviously the fact that we don't have any expenses, you know, like I sold my truck before I came out here, uh, so I'm not paying for my car payment. I don't have any car insurance. I don't even have a cell phone bill right now, so my expenses are really, really small. So it's been great for me to kind of save some money and help pay off some of the, the loans that I have from flight school and from going to college. But the one thing I've always said, and this kind of comes back from my days in sales, is that you can always make more money. You know, don't sacrifice time, uh, especially if it's time that's valuable to you or important to you, just so you can make more money. And then more than anything, if you do come out here, don't pigeonhole yourself and say, oh, I'm going to stay out here. Um, just because the money is, is you know somewhere between shitty and halfway decent. Because, again, at least in my opinion, this job is a wonderful stepping stone. There are plenty of guys who have been out here for five years or more. There are plenty of lifers you know, when it comes to tuna pilots, but personally, I'm not one of them. Uh, that's kind of all I have to say about it for now. I understand that there's going to be some people that want to listen to me talk and like these videos, and I understand there's other people that prefer the written format. So if you want to know more about some of the pros and cons of being out here, uh, I'm going to actually write up uh, something more in-depth on the website over on the blog, and I will definitely put a link in the description to it. So go ahead and look below, and again, if you like these videos, please, please, please like and subscribe. Help me build the community, um, because this is an outlet not just for me, but for all of us. Uh, and in the future, I hope to be getting some more pilots involved with the website, with the YouTube part of it. Uh, again, just to kind of build a larger community, a larger network. So here's me signing off for the day, and thanks for watching, guys.